Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I have just come back from Sydney, literally just walked in the door, and I'm back at home for less than 24 hours. But we've been to Costco and we've done a bulk food purchase and bulk stock purchase, and I thought I would take you through the haul. So let's go through the haul together. So we have got three boxes of beautiful Calypso mangoes. You guys know I recently picked up a tray of these and I freeze dried them and I'm a bit in love with freeze dried mango. It's a little bit like um, having a honeycomb sweet like you would from a violet crumble or a crunchy, except it tastes like mango, but your brain is confused the entire time thinking you're getting a honeycomb sweet, but it's actually really satisfying. And I can see this being the sort of thing you would take with you um, when you go camping or things like that. But it's also a nice way to get mangoes when they're out of season. So it's really hard to come by mangoes. Mangoes are something that I love. And frozen mangoes, they never quite taste the same because they're never, they're frozen when they're not quite ripe. Um, and I make a mango salad, which I might make for you guys at some point soon. Let's just see how we go with life. I will explain why life is complicated later. But um, a mango salad that is really, really tasty. And plus, I didn't get to eat any of the Calypso man mangoes last time because I freeze-dried them. I wanted to say froze dry, but that's not right. Um, so I have got three trays here. They are also a really amazing price at Costco at the moment. I will put the prices for everything on the screen because, to be honest, I can't be bothered to go through the receipt right now. I... <laughs> have a lot to do and I need to get everything put away and I'm only going to be in the bay for less than 24 hours and I've got a lot of stuff I've got to it must get done in this 20 hours while my mum is babysitting the dogs um, so one of these boxes is for my mum the price per mango is like a dollar fifty or less so that is a really good buy and I really like the calypsos they just taste nicer they don't look as manky which I know is just a psychological thing and the seed is not as cumbersome to deal with um, but one box as I said is for my mum and the two boxes are for me I'm going to freeze dry another box and I'm going to eat and freeze the other box the only thing is I need to get my freeze dryer sorted out ASAP and being in Sydney especially for longer than I was anticipating is proving to be problematic because I'm struggling to get the garlic smell out of my freeze dryer. Even though I've washed it and I've run a load since then that included two trays of potatoes to hopefully absorb the garlic smell out, it still smells like garlic. Anyway, so obviously I don't want mangoes that smell like garlic and there is a TikTok time issue in terms of mangoes, although it took me a week to freeze dry these last time I got them and they were still perfectly sweet. Um, these are, oh no, there's one that either got damaged in the drive or was damaged and I just didn't notice it when I was at Costco, but these are jazz apples, which are my favorite. Oh, I love these. I don't eat a lot of apples normally because they all kind of just taste the same and they're pretty bland. These don't look as shiny as jazz apples normally do. So again, I'm always suspicious when they don't look exactly like how my favorite jazz apples have looked. But these are super juicy, super sweet, and I desperately love them. The next thing I picked up, I wasn't planning to pick up, um, but is these donut peaches. I first came across donut peaches when I lived in the UK, and I was so amused by them. But I hadn't seen them for like 10 plus years since coming back. And I saw them recently and really enjoyed them because you can kind of just bite into them. They're a bite-sized treat. I normally don't love stone fruit because if it's nice and ripe, you do end up covered in the juices, kind of like with mangoes, but mangoes are worth any suffering that you go through for them. Stone fruit, I don't feel that much <laughs> intense love for them, but I'm just so amused by these and I saw them in Costco and I was really surprised, but I was like, hell yeah, I'm getting some stone fruit and I'm getting some donut peaches. So that's very exciting and I, I look forward to consuming these. Mostly because right now I'm starving. It is nearly 4 p.m. and I haven't eaten yet today. All I've done is get the dogs ready for my mum to babysit, which took a few hours to tire them out. And then I went to Costco and then I've done the three hour drive home. So I'm hungry. Going to Costco hungry is a, a very risky event, but I picked up um, two packs of the Caesar salad um, pre-make 
salad, whatever you want to call it. I got this last time I went to Costco and it was really tasty. It was the first time I tried it and it lasted really well over the days and it's $14.99 each, which is a really, I mean, it's not a good price for lettuce and a couple of eggs, but I've never successfully made a salad that I deeply love the way I love um, Caesar salad that is anchovy free. That is a France trauma that always makes me worry about anchovies and Caesar salad. Um, but I've never had that problem in Australia probably because it's, anchovies aren't that popular here. So I picked up a parmesan cheese this time in um, Costco to give it a go to make my own Caesar salad. Um, and hopefully it'll be as tasty as this, but it really comes down to the dressing. And I am terrible with dressings. That is my problem with salads. I have fantastic ideas and terrible dressings. Um, so if you know of a great Caesar salad dressing, then please, please, please let me know. You will revolutionize my life. Um, the other problem I have is that I don't do well with wheat. So I am not celiac. I am wheat intolerant and I really don't do well with it. It gives me nightmares, gives me tummy problems, gives me all sorts of strange things. Um, but someone told me the other day about freeze drying beetroot to make really tasty croutons. So I have beetroot in the freezer now ready to go in the freeze dryer, but we've still got the garlic problem. Anyway, moving on. Got another two pack of celery. These are for freeze drying and for making veggie stock paste. My celery is really weedy and skinny and I don't know why. Um, and the celery that I've planted because our summer has been incredibly cold, like Bust out your jumper and your tracksuit pants cold because the nights are less than 10 degrees still sometimes. Um, most of my celery has gone to seed. I also picked up and may have eaten on the drive home um, another pack of Portuguese tarts. These are my mum's favourite and I'm going back to Sydney tomorrow so we can share with the crew uh, tomorrow. This paleo um, granola that is gluten free, I haven't actually tried it yet. I keep meaning to. But this is my mum's favorite and I picked up three bags for her. You guys might remember our last haul. I picked up oyster mushrooms. I was really surprised to see them in Costco and they looked so beautiful and healthy that I was like, oh my God, I need to get them. I hate mushrooms with a violent, fiery passion. Uh, it's mostly mostly a textural issue. They kind of, my experience of them is that they're slimy as they slide down your throat and it really freaks me out and yeah, it's upsetting. Anyway, I recently did have um, some mushrooms actually on a Woodstone um, pizza that is amazing locally, and it was actually really nice. So anyway, there might be hope for me and mushrooms, but these are for the dogs. They have great medicinal value, and I've never seen these in the shopping center, possibly because we are rural, but possibly also because I don't look for mushrooms because they're gross. Um, but I picked up a pack last time. They freeze dried beautifully into this very light fluffy powder and I popped it on top of the dog's food and they loved it. I've still got plenty to go, but I thought there's a lot of um, talk about inflation in Australia and obviously worldwide and, you know, get it now, deal with it problems later. For the same reason, I also picked up portobello mushrooms. There are a lot of gluten-free vegetarian recipes um, that are right up my alley, except they call for portobello mushrooms and I won't buy mushrooms and put them in my food. But I'm hoping that if I can freeze dry and powder this, I might be able to put it in and I might be able to emotionally cope with mushrooms and the idea of a, idea of a fungus in my food. And before you ask, no, I don't think about the fungus factor in cheese. It only freaks me out with, um, with uh, mushrooms. That being said, I would not touch blue cheese with a 40 foot pole because it's moldy. And yes, I know that white stuff on camembert cheese is apparently also mold, but I choose not to cognitively deal with that. I picked up another pack of powdered milk. I haven't bought any powdered milk in a long time. I don't drink a lot of milk um, and I can't buy, always buy the, the milk that I do well with in small quantities. Um, so that's part of the reason I got powdered milk, but it's also obviously because of inflation and shortages and things like that. And all my other powdered milk is in my lab bag. So I thought I would pick up one more bag and um, I'll get around to popping that in the Mylar bag eventually. Um, some milks where they've fiddled with the proteins, like A2 milk, gives me eczema and I haven't had eczema for 30 years, so I didn't really appreciate that. Um, but I just picked up some general like household cleaning products and garbage bags and things like that um, as well while I was at Costco. I picked up another massive um, nine by one liter coconut water. 
I used most of these last time, but life got in the way and I totally forgot I had them out in the garage. So they did go off um, before I could use them all. But now I am much more focused on healing my microbiome and increasing my fiber content. And part of that I do is a berry shake sometimes with mangoes, um, but with a lot of um, linseeds and hemp heart seeds and um, chia in it to try and bulk up my fiber intake to hopefully heal my gut from all my life and um, hopefully therefore improve my health. So I picked up another nine by one liter box because this is significantly cheaper than buying it in the supermarket locally and hopefully it will all get used very swiftly this time and I'll have to go and get some more soon. That's the hope. I picked up another two pack of gluten-free bread in Costco. This particular brand actually freezes beautifully, tastes really nice and is really nice and soft, which is very uncommon with gluten-free bread. Doesn't have a weird aftertaste. And they also make um, like English muffin style um, packs that are just so much cheaper than buying them in the supermarket. Gluten-free bed in the supermarket for this size would be about seven or eight dollars depending on the brand. And this is like, or was, I didn't check this time, but seven dollars for two. So it's a much better buy and much, much, much nicer bread. So I always try and get some when I, when they have some at Costco. I also picked up a, a, a two pack of Jarlsberg cheese. It's been a while since I had some Jarlsberg. I love Jarlsberg. As a kid, I used to um, pop Jarlsberg and um, canned corn on a bread roll because at least then it doesn't explode out the back um, like it would with a sandwich. And that would be my lunch. And that's amazing. It doesn't work so well these days because I am yet to find a gluten-free bread bun. So again, if you know a gluten-free bread bun recipe that actually works, please let me know. This was, I think, the best deal of Costco. I would have got more if I had freezer space. And so the garlic in the freeze dryer needs to be dealt with. And that problem needs to go away because these are a four pack of Australian lamb shanks. Um, and they are $12.99 a kilo. And look at how beefy these lamb shanks are. They are massive. That's like two meals per shank. Um, so that was an amazing, amazing deal. And I was pretty stoked to find that one, actually. I also picked up these gluten-free bases. I didn't realize that they wouldn't fit in the Esky on the drive home. So hopefully these will be okay. Um, they might have defrosted a little bit in the two-hour drive um, from Costco to home. Uh, but these will go back in the freezer and hopefully they'll be right. But I find gluten-free pizza base making hit and miss. Sometimes one recipe turns out beautifully and another time it turns out terribly. And yeah, but I figured it's worth a try. We'll see if we like it and go from there. There are a number of herbs and spices and things like that that I was looking for that I couldn't find in Costco and that I can't find in my local supermarket. So I'll have to go shopping in Sydney. Um, so I've just picked up what I could find in Costco. Um, and I also picked up these, hopefully these actually work. My dishwasher has been playing up and, um, every time I wash particularly glass, it comes out covered in like a sediment and things just aren't getting as clean as I would like them to be. And so that's meaning I'm having to double wash, whether it be by hand or machine. And it's just a waste. So hopefully that cleans out the dishwasher a bit. A final Costco purchase was this whiteboard. So I got this whiteboard, number one, because it was a really good deal, but also because I used to use a black board that was cardboard type material and I used to pin my goals on it and I, in theory, moved them from to-do to um, currently active and then done in a, in a kind of... Um, way to theoretically keep myself motivated and focused on the goals rather than flitting about from day to day doing things that float my boat or that need to be done in the short term rather than just essentially rather than just flowing with a never-ending to-do list and it just to try and keep me more focused it didn't work but that's because life happened and to be honest <laughs> Rafa has been my problem child between hip dysplasia and a potential massive pelvic surgery. And then now his current situation, which I'll tell you about in a bit. 
and adopting Bertie and my health issues that are never bloody ending. Although I seem to be on the improve, so hopefully all this home cooking, home growing, home preserving, home everythinging is helping. So hopefully, but anyway, so I got this board to substitute for those black cardboard board things because with all the rain we've had with La Nina, they were moldy. And they keep saying La Nina is weakening and it's a bit like, well, duh, because it hasn't rained here in six weeks. So, which has been a nice break, but everything out there is looking crisp and glover. But anyway, so I got this to hopefully be my new goal board and try and refocus me once again. Although I wish myself luck in that endeavor. Then we come to an exciting new addition. So this is not a Costco pickup. My mum bought this for me for Christmas. Um, I am pretty pumped about this. My brother has made a, a gluten-free bread, um, I believe with a pre-mixed flour. I need to find out with his bread maker that is actually pretty nice and light and fluffy. Um, so hopefully tasty bread is in my future. My mum also got me three packs of six um, canning jars. I think she thought these were, um, I'm just gonna pop a hole in it so I can hold it properly. I think she thought these would help me in my canning endeavors, but they've got a different kind of lid and I'm not sure about the quality of the glass, but I'll be able to use these for freeze drying and for um, putting oxygen, oxygen absorbers in there and that will, you know, yeah, they'll get used. She also got me a, a pack of Christmas cookie cutters, so that'll be fun, and two different types of bunny cookie cutters, seeing I seem to be the designated cook of the family, so I guess I'm making Easter biscuits at this rate. And thankfully, I have come home to my peach butter um, preserving beautifully. I wasn't sure how it would go because I did it the night before we left, and then I had to bolt and because I was then asleep, I didn't hear it pop. Um, and you know, if it, if it didn't seal, we were in Sydney for longer than anticipated. Um, I thought we were only going to be in Sydney for 24 hours, but that didn't happen, um, with Rafa's knee, but, um, thankfully they all sealed beautifully. And I have one actually open one up at Sydney and it's so tasty, but it is a little bit like peach jam. So I'm not sure why it's called peach butter. Part of the reason I have things like my Christmas presents and I brought them home is because there was some debate as to whether I would attend Christmas at all. Rafa injured his knee uh, 10 days ago now. And since then I've had a really hard time following the vet instructions of basically keeping him confined to allow any potential ligament strain a chance to heal. The, the trouble is that the ligament that he might have potentially injured, apparently it doesn't fibrose over and heal if torn in dogs like it might in humans. There's some debate that you could give it a chance and it might uh, fibrose over and heal. There are some things I've seen on more homeopathic um, sites uh, that would suggest that it might heal but anyway the point is that basically if you partial tear or rupture this ligament it's surgery and they have to cut through the bone and rearrange the bone to stabilize the knee and he's basically man down for 12 weeks and he's not allowed to do anything so a uh, part of the reason why I'm here today is my mum is looking after the dogs while Rafa is still on medication to sedate him and make him less inclined to play. And so I brought these things home so I can get them away and do things like tidy up the house and get it ready because he was supposed to have an arthroscopy on Tuesday, which is two days away from now. And I need to like deconstruct the bed, put the mattress on the floor, move the crate into my bedroom and basically make it so we could be as confined as possible, which is going to be so difficult. The last 10 days has been incredibly difficult and we haven't gone to the level of crating him and things like that because he doesn't like it and because he can get out. Um, but it's obviously also very difficult with Birdie and Birdie has only been with us for eight weeks and she is very bonded to him now and they want to be together and they cry when they're not together and they scratch doors and it's just me at home and I don't know how I'm going to do with that. So anyway, the point of coming home today was that my mum was basically giving me 
less than 24 hours, but essentially 24 hours to get the house ready, get the groceries ready, get the dog stuff ready, do all the things I'm not going to be able to do if he has surgery because the plan was arthroscopy on Tuesday and if the ligament is not viable then surgery straight away and but I, I still don't know if that's going to go ahead I I am leaning towards conservative management as I do with my own clients I'm a physio by trade um, and then if conservative management fails okay then we can look at surgical options but the only way to 100% diagnose this issue in the dog would be to sedate him and do the test and even then that's not 100% but basically an MRI or an arthroscopy and MRI is much more expensive than arthroscopy and arthroscopy is $3,000 plus. So and if there's no ligament tear then you've done arthroscopy and created scar tissue. Anyway so that has been my life for the last little while which is why I have been slow putting out videos. I know I'm behind. I know that but I'm, I'm having to monitor them all the time. And it's making it extremely difficult to do anything else, to film anything else. I've been trying to film in the garden and trying to revive the garden after some damage that happened last time we went to Sydney. And it was incredibly hot and incredibly windy. And my best friend wasn't able to water all the time. And we haven't had rain in six, seven weeks, really. And everything just kind of died and went to seed and dried out all at the same time. And so the garden looks like a bomb's gone off. And I haven't been able to do much at all. I've been able to get out there for maybe one or two hours. And even then it's been struggle street the whole time coming in and out, in and out. And so hopefully today I can deal with some of that. And I've got the shopping done and I'm going to be able to tidy the house and get things organized. But my apologies if the, the content has been not as frequent as it should be. And if that continues going forward, this is kind of the situation we're dealing with and it just is what it is. But that is why I have my Christmas presents. It's a very long explanation. Um, there's a couple more I still got to bring back down with me, but these are the things my mum has given me to bring back down. And that's why I have them with me today. Part of the reason why I went to Costco again so soon uh, after our last trip is because number one, I'm hoping to be able to do a bit more because I don't have the dogs with me this time, which means I can buy some of the things um, that don't need to then be put in my parents fridge or freezer they don't have a lot of fridge or freezer space so uh, hopefully the motivation there makes sense um, because the dogs are staying with my mum i can just pick up the stuff at costco and drive straight home and put it in the fridge or the freezer or wherever it needs to be um, obviously also the motivation is that i need to make sure i have everything i need in the event that rafa is man down for one to twelve weeks and we are trapped at home for one to 12 weeks um also as i said before it's about inflation so we are a week out from christmas at this exact moment so you guys will probably see this after christmas so hopefully you guys have had a wonderful and very safe holiday but um we have been told in australia that a lot of our um supermarket prices have been held static until january 1st uh, to help people manage the cost of living, which means that the prices are going to go up on January 1st. And we have been told that particularly toilet paper is going to be expensive. And so I was hoping to get more toilet paper at Costco because it just lasts better. It's a firmer product and it's not as flimsy. And anyway, we don't need to know why the toilet paper is better, but it is better at Costco. And the last three times I've been to Costco, I haven't been able to get any toilet paper. They haven't had any. And today was the same. Um, and I'm going to go. One of the things I've got to do today is go and stock up on toilet paper because the price is going to shoot up after January. As a one person household, I need to try and find ways to hedge my bets against inflation as much as I can. And this is one of the ways that I'm trying to do it. The other way I'm trying to hedge against inflation is to have a garden that produces food that I can eat. Um, and so right now I'm going to put all this away and I'm going to head into the garden and try and get as much done as I can before these puppies come home and I am confined to the house again. So <laughs> there is so much to do and so little time to do it before I have to turn around and head back to Sydney at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning and it is 4 p.m. now and I haven't had lunch and I'm starving so I'm gonna go and deal with all of that 
I hope you guys have enjoyed hanging out with us for this haul and that you have enjoyed this video and you're enjoying the content on this channel. I am sorry that you haven't seen more gardening stuff, even though the channel is called The Learning Gardener, but hopefully you understand now why I haven't been in the garden as much with a sick, or not sick puppy, with an injured puppy who needs to be monitored at all times. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate you guys spending your time with us and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and happy holidays.